It's ending. No matter what, we're finishing this today. Oh. I've run out of titles for the streams for the YouTube videos. That's why they've gotten rather silly on the YouTube playlist. Uh, so, as I said at the end of last stream, I caught up on all the Platinum Relics. Other than the final two. We have the final two levels of the game left to do. And in order to get the full 100%, I have to get both of these Platinum, not just Gold, on this stream. I'm going to estimate this will take four hours. Could take three, could take five. Uh, we can look at the list we can see. We have everything except for those last two relics. I'm going to do a once-over of all of the levels that we've done before, just to see that the, uh... See the Platinums, see the times that we got. Hello, Darian. It is about time. You know what else? This game just went on sale on Steam. And, uh... I bought it there. Now there's nothing stopping me from starting right over from the beginning again. I think I'll take a break, though. I don't think I'll do that right away. A lot of these are still like I, I'm not. I can't hope to get the the toys for Bob relics. I've, I've talked about that before. Some of them are just like insane. A lot of them are still like twenty seconds short of the platinum times that I got. I think this is stream number fourteen. Is how long that we've been at this. This has gone several years now, pretty much since the Switch version of this game released, I think. This one's close. This one's within five seconds. It's also a Dingadile level, though, so that, that kind of... That lowers the skill ceiling. I understand that the uh, Toys for Bob relics are, like, a lot of frame-perfect Crash and Coco spinning. In a lot of these cases. This is a big game. There's a lot of levels in this game. That was a dinga dial level. The Cortex levels, in general, kind of sucked for time trials, because a lot of them have, like, doubling back and puzzles and things like that. Which we saw in the in the last couple of streams. A lot of stuff that doesn't really lend itself to uh, time trials. The ice world was really bad. This whole world was pretty bad. Rush Hour and the Great Escape. And the Crate Escape took me a while. However, I was about five seconds away on Crate Escape as well. And I was very, like, non-optimal with the last section, jumping on the boxes. If there was one in the game that I think I could do, it was that one. If I threw myself at it enough and uh, really optimized the crate jumping section. Which just tells me that the devs didn't want to spend more time on that level than they had to any more than I did. Anyway, last two levels, Cortex Castle and Seeing Double, both extremely difficult. We'll see how fast this goes. Probably not very fast at all. 255 for Sapphire. Probably sub two minutes for Platinum, I'm gonna guess. Oh, that's right. This uses all the masks, so we're gonna have uh, phasing. In and out. I got. Not only do they not have like uh, time crates behind the clock, they don't bother to remove the uh, the Wumpa crates. These aren't supposed to exist in time trials. The question bot, the question ones. 
All right. Starting strong. I think I labeled like stream number eight of this game the finale. So it's been five full streams since I last touched this level. Well, no, that's not true, because I, I did the gems and stuff off-stream. I'm, I'm gonna not worry about spinning until I have just, like, the basic of this level start down. Because I don't need to be dying this much this early. Uh... I wonder if I could jump up there. Oh, what is this? Is this the... I think that's the time stop mask. That's a mean start. That's a really elaborate first section. That looks very nearly makeable, but I don't think it is. Talking uh, before the stream started, that uh, Limited Run Games has announced a. They've announced several re releases of some weird properties, like a, a Gex trilogy. Not remasters. From the sound of it, they are just their re releases. <sighs> no, not quite. Maybe if I do a. Uh, Maybe a crouch jump, double jump. Yeah, they're not remasters, which is less exciting, I suppose. I mean, I don't love Gex anyway, but... It is also interesting because we were just talking about... The notion of a Gex remaster on the previous Crash stream, I think a week ago. Amid rumors of a Croc remaster. Waiting for that one. But, again, not remasters. They are re-releases. Of, uh, the Gex trilogy. Let's see. Clock Tower. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. And the old Jurassic Park games. Is what was announced. No, I need up there. Which I w I would rather they ported the first two uh, first two roller coaster tycoon games, but it's just it's a weird series to be on the Switch. I wonder if there's ever been a uh, like a non shovelware theme park sim game on the Switch. Because I don't... Planet Coaster can't be on there. That's way too resource-intensive for the Switch. It doesn't come up a, a lot, but the Roller Coaster Tycoon ga games are actually some of my favorites. And I have not streamed them as much as... Uh, much as I probably should have. We did a couple of those uh, open roller coaster tycoon streams, and that was kind of it. I always said that I was going to uh, 
I was going to try Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and uh, Planet Coaster, and then I just, I never got around to it. It's never too late, I guess, but, uh... I guess I kind of ended up streaming a lot of City Skylines instead, instead, and that just kind of met my, uh... That just met my sim quota. There's a sequel to uh, City Skylines coming out. I'm looking forward to that. And, uh... That not quite the Sims game by the dude who was on the creative team of the Sims. You know, if I can make this jump, that will be that'll be more worth it than going for that two crate. Maybe I should go for that. I saw what recently the uh, the Sims game. I think it's called Life by You. Is the title of it. And it's trying to go, like, really all out on uh, allowing, like, modding and users to do whatever they want to do with the game. Which is cool. I I'm glad when games do that. Oh, you don't die. You, you just get bounced back, I see. City Skylines 2. I don't know what they could... what they could add? Maybe I'm just unimaginative. Maybe they will just do, like, the same but better. I don't know. Because City Skylines, the original, has, like... As far as Steam games go, it might have the most DLC of any game on Steam, or close to it. If you were to buy all of the DLC for City Skylines on Steam, I think, I think it would run you, like, over $1,000. Maybe I'm bullshitting. Maybe, I, maybe I, I'm misremembering something. I just remember there was, there's, like, a huge amount of it. I did the thing I said I wasn't going to do. I went for the crate again. No, I need that. Can I just... Do I even need to... I don't need to slow down time for that. Helps. They just recently released City Skyline Remastered for the PS5. How did they... What do you mean, Remastered? Do they, like, upscale textures or something? What's there to remaster? They didn't remaster the Steam version. Well, I'm ahead of the ghost, but that's the sapphire ghost, so that's that's nothing impressive. We're not even at the like the part of the level I remember yet. Also, I don't need to I don't need to wait for those. I wonder if I can make it up this jump. Probably not. That one looks like too much. Why what happened? It's not the actual, like, full DLC packs that drive it up, because there's only, like, I don't know, ten of those at most. Only half of which are, like, really big, substantial feature additions. I thought... I'll bet I can make that. If I'm real fast. It's just a lot of the little stuff, because there, there's a huge amount of, like, little tiny, like, dollar, two dollar cosmetic stuff, I think is what, like, drives it up. I'm gonna go for the- I'm gonna go for the big jump, see if I can make this. <sighs> no, not quite. Oh, yeah, I can make that. Okay. Yeah, that's the way to do it.
The Sims also has a, a pretty bad track record of, like, uh, unnecessary DLC. Not even DLC, because that was all, like, uh, Joel plays The Sims. And the complaint that I hear from him about it is mainly that, uh, like, they have all of these, uh, all these, like, expansion pack features, like pets and things. Oh, this is the upside down mask. I thought I still had the, uh, I thought I still had the, the other thing. I don't. Uh, The Sims. Like, The Sims 3 has all these extra features they have in expansions, like pets and college and, and other areas of the game. And then you buy Sims 4 and all that is gone, and once again they release it as expansions. Instead of just including you know, the features that existed in the newest iteration of the game. Unrestricted placement mode, quick selection tool, UI improvements. I wonder if maybe they had a, uh, maybe they had a shittier version of City Skylines on consoles. And they beefed it up to the same like standards as the PC version and call that remastered? Maybe that's what happened? It's been a while since I streamed that game. I was in the middle of uh, one city the last time I streamed it. But I should do at least one more stream of, si of regular city skylines. Has too many games to stream, not enough time to stream them. I looked at the, uh... I looked at the playlist on the channel recently. And, uh, I thought that I'd done a stream of, uh, Nitro Fueled. I didn't. I never streamed, uh, Crash Nitro Fueled. Which, I guess there's not a ton of reason to stream it, but... Now I'm thinking about, like, what highlights I should do, because it'd be weird if I had the highlights of, like, all the Crash games except Team Racing. I could do highlights of my, uh, my old Team Racing playthrough, but that's, that's real old at this point. I don't know if I want to go back that far. I also don't know if I want to even... I might not do them for uh, Crash Nitro Kart. Tag Team Racing was a goofy enough stream that I think that would be funny for highlights. I don't know about the other two, if they need to... Uh, if I need to worry about those. I think what's happening is that I'm slowing down time while I'm in, like, my jump squat animation. I think I've done that a couple times, and I'm like, why am I moving so slowly? Because I'm not, like, fully in control of my character yet. No, get up! Get up! Ah! I did it once, I'm never gonna do it again. Maybe this level is shorter than I remember. I, I feel like... <sighs> Do I remember the last part of the level being the upside-down part? No, it was like a gauntlet with all of the masks. I think that's after the upside-down part.
Darian, did you ever play the, uh... Did you ever play the PS3 or the Xbox 360 versions of Minecraft? That was when, uh... Like, early Minecraft YouTube days, like 2012. I would watch uh, Achievement Hunter did Minecraft videos. They played in the... They played in the Xbox 360 version. And it was like, uh... It was a, it was such a tiny world size. It was like 500 by no more than 500 blocks, but it, it was very very small compared to the like infinite, you know, Minecraft PC world limit. Not literally infinite, but practically inf in infinite. PS3 was easily the worst version. That's right, because at least the 360 version got like. Uh, it got, like, mod packs and things that you can get. I bet the PS3 didn't have a lot of those. Especially since a lot of them were, uh, I think a lot of them were, uh, Microsoft properties. Like, there was, uh, Master Chief skins and Banjo. Alright, still got my mask. What? Oh, there's a pedestal. That's what I'm hitting. Jump squat. No, it's not jump squat. I just completely blinded a piece of geometry. recently. Uh, Derry knows about, like, everything I talk about, but, uh, I guess I like to make conversation for posterity anyway. That should have been a slide jump. Uh, so Dragon Ball is now doing a crossover event with PUBG. PUBG Mobile. But PUBG all the same, so uh, G Goku's just, like, making his way into all of the, uh... All the Battle Royale shooters. I'm sure if Culling were still around, he'd be in that one. Man, no one remembers the Culling. Even though it was, like... Functionally the first of the genre, you know, that's not true. I, th I think the Battle Royale thing was like a, a game mode in... It was a game mode in some popular game. And then the Culling was the first to make it like a standalone game. And I thought they did a good job, about, job of it. Culling looked really cool in its heyday, then they just kind of ruined it over time. the wrong thing to do. Okay, double jump, then release. I can probably get away with, like, not fighting that guy. I don't know how quite, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Uh-oh! Well, I didn't want to do that.
I can definitely speed through that without waiting for the platform. Was this the, uh, was this the Crash 1 Cortex Castle theme? Because I don't fully remember the the music for this area in Crash 1. I think it is. I think this was, like, what played in the lab, right? Yeah, I'll just go over him. That's what I'll do. gonna need optimizing that section. You'd think I'd remember the music of the lab. I only spent like, you know, five hours there. Oh boy, here we go. What? I don't know why that caught me off guard. We've reached the gauntlet. We've reached the final part of the level. We're getting there. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna get gold. I don't think I'm gonna get platinum at this rate. I think it's gonna take me a few more tries for platinum at least. Jack and I were uh, watching My Hero Academia. And there is a side character who is, like, totally covered in, in hair. I don't remember the name of his quirk specifically, but uh, it's, uh, like, that was his powers, like, hair manipulation. Jack said he wondered what the name of the quirk was, and I made a joke. I said, no, it's Chewy. His name's Chewy. And we looked it up, and his hero name was, in fact, Chewy. Horikoshi had the gall to just name the character who looks like Chew Chewbacca Chewy. There's just nothing subtle about it. And Darian pointed out, that apparently the whole series is full of Star Wars, like, name references. Which I suppose I've missed watching it. <sighs> too far. That was too far away. I saved it. Wasted a little time.
I wonder who owns Croc. I wonder who just who would decide if that were to get a re-release. Re Apparently Gex was owned at some point by a Square Enix, or at least to some degree. Which I was not aware of, because it's a very, like, not Square Enix-y series, Gex. I don't know what I expected to happen there. I should be able to play as Crash with Coco, like, following me. You know, collecting rings, hitting bombs, just generally being a nuisance. That'd be swell. I don't know why they don't do that in this game. Why didn't it come out that time? Press the button. Button didn't register. Bullshit game. lose my masks a lot. If I were able to keep them, I wonder where I might get invincibility. Not that I think it would be hugely impactful on this level, because, like, the final stretch of it... The final stretch of it is all just, like, uh, it's this upside-down stuff. Which everything's instant death anyway. Argonaut merged into a company called Rocksteady Studios. What uh, are, are Rocksteady like owned by anyone? What have what have they done? I need that. Ah! I wonder who sets the, uh... I wonder how they set the lower relics. Like, obviously the dev times are the dev times. Do they, like, do they get shittier devs to set the lesser relics? Like, the ones who aren't as good at the game? Or do they just intentionally do stuff like wait around at times to make the time slower? Because it looked like that's what Crash was doing there, was just kind of stopping to wait for no reason. I also wonder if the if the toys for Bob's relics are uh, if they're tool assisted. Maybe they use like save states for those, which would be kind of scummy if that's the case. But boy, I just I don't see any other way they could be like legitimate. I refuse to believe that the, that the devs of this game are not still human. Oh, they're the uh, Batman Arkham guys. Or uh, Rocksteady.
I saw a list the other day of like uh, 10 forgotten Saturday morning cartoons. And some of them were like more like Gem and the Holograms, and the Beatles cartoon. Not Beatles, the uh, the the Beetlejuice cartoon. And I'm like, come on, people remember the Beetlejuice. The, the, no, those aren't forgotten. But there were also a couple, a few like obscure ones on the list. Uh, I learned there was apparently a uh, uh, like Hulk Hogan era WWF cartoon. It didn't last very long. Obviously didn't age well with Hogan in it, but uh... It sounds like just goofy enough that it could be entertainingly bad. Like, apparently there's an episode where the Iron Sheik, the guy who just nowadays just screams on Twitter all day, in all caps, there's an episode of a cartoon where he learns to drive. I want to splice that with the Dragon Ball Z episode. Goku, Piccolo, and the Iron Sheik learn how to drive. Oh, here's some news from today. Apparently, the uh, Activision acquisition by Microsoft did, in fact, go through. Which I'm not, like, dying over, but I'm, I'm a little bit happy about it, because... Boy, Activision doesn't like to treat their series right at all. Boy, do they love to cancel games in order to make bigger, more flashy Call of Duty games. My faith, my faith in Microsoft is not that high, but anything's better than Activision. Maybe now we'll get more good Tony Hawk games. That'd be nice. Maybe we'll get Spyro 4, or Crash 5. Probably not. But it feels possible now. Didn't Banjo Nuts and Bolts start out with, like, the two of them being, like, really slow-moving and out of shape? They should do that with Spyro 5. Give him the Japanese version movement speed until you run a certain amount. Then you get full movement speed. Hello, Jack. I thought EA was the one canceling for Call of Duty. I thought... No, that's Activision, isn't it? Is that EA? Did I get confused? Yeah, it's Activision. EA isn't great, but, uh... I mean, the most they're guilty of is not doing anything with the Burnout franchise. Burnout Paradise never got a sequel. Now I gotta settle for Forza. what series EA has that aren't sports games. Because I know they're like the sports games guys. Activision owns Blizzard, right? So, uh... Any, any Blizzard properties? 
are now theoretically freer. I mean, it all depends on what Microsoft wants to do anything with. That was too early. Okay, I made it. Oh, I'm invincible. I, I did get enough. And then that ends it automatically. Most of the Star Wars games are EA. Okay, what am I doing with this? I can stand on the laser. Well, this kind of invalidates this whole section, other than the instant death laser parts. <sighs> I gotta worry about those. If I can keep my masks, that's great. That should be help for, helpful for those final sections, at least. Jack, did you hear about uh, Gex getting re getting re-releases along with uh, Clark Clock Tower, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, and the uh, Jurassic Park games? Apparently, Limited Run Games is porting a bunch of stuff to the Switch and I think Steam. I think they're putting this stuff on Steam. I don't remember if it was on Steam or not. I wonder how well the, uh, the, the Disney game remasters, The Lion King and Aladdin, those kind of came out of nowhere. They were on Switch, and I don't remember if they were on anything else. They might have been Switch exclusive. I wonder how those did. Some are Switch only, others are multi-platform. Well, the roller coaster one would be, like, redundant on anything else because it's already on PC. As far as I know, that series has never been on Nintendo consoles, so it's definitely a weird... a weird first. Roller Coaster Tycoon games are very, like, uh, PC specific as a series. What? Are, I'm just. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. They're on PS5 as well. easy to hit the side of these platforms by mistake. It's going to be hard to keep my masks in this level. Switch and PS5. I wonder if they were on Steam. Probably not.
I actually looked this up recently. Uh, achievements are cool because they're a good... They're, like, the least flawed way to gauge a game's difficulty, I think. I looked it up on Steam, and 1.7% uh, of players have 100%ed Crash 4 on Steam. Which, believe it or not, is slightly lower than the number of players that have 100%ed Splunky 2. That surprised me a little bit. Because this game is very hard. I guess I considered it more tedious than difficult, whereas Splunky 2 is just, like, balls hard completely. I don't know, I guess they're of comparable difficulty. I want up there! I, ke I keep hesitating, because I, I forget what the start of this section looks like. I can one-cycle it if I go right away. It's good if I'm as anal as possible the whole time I'm playing for these levels, because that's the only way that we're going to get, like, actual platinum on them. City Skyline again. On the PS5, you mean? Wait, at this point, you might as well wait for the sequel. Unless maybe the sequel will be too be too beefy for PS5. <laughs> what if they do a City Skylines 2 PS5 edition? What am I doing? And then the PS6 gets the full, like, the full version of the game. I hope my computer can run the new one okay. I haven't upgraded in a while, but it's still pretty beefy. Planet Coaster is more intensive than uh, City Skylines is. I, I really should stream it. I should get around to it. Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2 are some of my favorite games. I love those games. Uh, I owned three, but it ran like crap on my childhood computer, so I never played very much of it. So if I were to try that, that would be mostly blind as well. For those of you who are not familiar with the series, Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 was a pixel-based, isometric, probably the kind of graphics that you think of if you think of the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 was same graphics, reused a lot of assets. It was just one but more. And then 3 was the first one to go fully 3D. And the big selling point was that you could, uh, you could finally ride the rides, which you couldn't do in the first two because they were sprite-based games. And 3 was very popular for a while. People liked it. 
but now that there are like better 3D roller coaster games like Planet Coaster out there, I think it's pretty much forgotten about. Whereas there's still nostalgia for one and two because they are, you know, they're they're sprite games and they're also, I guess they have their own like unique mechanics that kind of hold up to time. I still like them. I want to get uh, Worms and Open Roller Coaster Tycoon working. Because those are potential, like, multiplayer stream ideas. Unfortunately, they both require port forwarding and can be a pain in the ass to get to work. Man! Any other games you guys are looking forward to? Admittedly, there's not a ton for me right now. It's pretty much just the Cities 2 and that uh, that new Sims-style game. Which I've never even played a Sims game before. It just looks like it might be fun. Might be like a goofy stream game. Lord knows we're never getting a Tomodachi sequel. Maybe I just summoned it. Maybe we're finally going to get Tomodachi 2, now that I've said that. Except now that I've said that we're going to get it, now that means we're not going to get it. As these things work. Also, technically, it'd be Tamadachi 3, because, uh... Tamadachi 1 was on the DS, and it was Japanese-exclusive. It was called Tamadachi Collection. Okay, I did it this time! There we go. Oh no, I remember this. Okay, we're good. We're not good. Okay, wait, no, I can just fall down there. <sighs> Wish I remembered that. Wonder looks cool. Yeah. It's a little more interesting than another new Super Mario Brothers game, at the very least. Looks like it's got a lot of weirdness in it. I don't know how, vi how viable it would be for us to stream it, because, uh... We'd have to both own the game. That's even assuming that there's online multiplayer. It might just be couch co-op. Knowing Nintendo probably will just be couch co-op. You know we're getting Elephant Peach. It's already decided. We haven't seen it yet, but we know Peach is playable, and we know the elephant's in the game. It's only a matter of time before the internet is swarmed with Elephant Peach and Elephant Toad. And you just know when it happens. It's going to be the Rule 34 featured image. 
people hate me because I speak the truth. It is online, it won't be good. Oh, if it is online. Yeah. Especially after Mario Maker somehow having worse online than Smash Ultimate. I say that. I don't even think Smash Ultimate's online is that bad. I think Smash Ultimate's online is as good as your internet. And a lot of people have really bad internet. Is there a game that people universally agree has good online? Is that a thing? Because it feels like the, the common sentiment is either it's inoffensive or it's awful. Worst thing ever. Looks Satan's asshole. And I think it comes down mostly to how well does this system and this gameplay accommodate for people with bad internet. Because a lot of people just plain have bad internet. And hope that this, this video game will magically make their internet like, good? Even though that's not, you know, possible. Darian, do you have any input? You are the gospel of Bat Online. I trust- I trust you. Worms is conducive to Bat Online. But that's because it's a turn-based game. People praise the uh, Street Fighter V netcode. It's also true that Nintendo just doesn't seem to, like, care about their online. It's always, like, an afterthought to them, and then whenever they're confronted about it, they just kind of sweep it under the rug. I think the best example was probably the, uh... I don't remember when it was exactly, but there was a Nintendo-sponsored Smash tournament. Where they were streaming the match, and the players... Playing Smash Brothers online, it was an online tournament, were very obviously and very badly lagging with each other to a point that it was just like unplayable. And the Nintendo spokesperson on stage was like, please rest assured, this is on our end. This is not how the game experience is for the players. Presumably knowing full well that that was, in fact, what the game experience was for the players. Maybe he didn't, but even if he didn't, that's not much better. I think this is my favorite of the masks, the inversion mask. Okay, well, I saved that somehow. Man. This one feels the most fluid. And has the most, like, uh, like, I can use this. I still feel like I have full control of my character. Like, I'm, I'm not shoehorned into playing in a specific way while using it. South Korea has the best internet in the world. Maybe. Here, here's another thing about, like, a lot of Japanese games, Japanese companies like Nintendo. Nintendo tends to design their online for Japan. 
where everything is pretty urban and everyone is within close proximity to each other. And then when it doesn't work for people like elsewhere in more rural parts of the world, or people with worse internet, they're like, oh well, it worked when we tried it. They also have a, uh, a magical yokai spirit in Japan that uh, prevents controller issues, which is why Nintendo is convinced that there is no problem whatsoever with the Nintendo Joy-Cons. So a little known, little known fact. I'll bet I could, I could have made that jump. I didn't need him to lift that bridge. Man! These instant death lasers. I underestimate my spin. And then the second level we're gonna do is just gonna be this but harder. By the way, why are there lab assistants on skateboards? On hoverboards? Should I question this? It's a little weird. What are they doing on hoverboards? Just shredding? It was the 90s. I, I was gonna say no it wasn't, this was made like two years ago. But uh, yeah, canonically this was the 90s. This part of the game takes place in 1996. You can tell because of the uh, medieval knights everywhere. Wrath the Cortex was probably the most anachronistic crash game. I've mentioned this a couple times in the Smash in the, the crash streams is that it made sense to have all of these wacky, like, different time era settings in uh, Crash Warped because the theme of that game was time travel. In Wrath of Cortex, they posit that they're just going around the planet Earth to different, like, actual locations. Using virtual reality technology, I don't ask how that works. I'm still figuring it out. But uh, the fact that there's, like, dragons and medieval castles in Wrath of Cortex raises the question. I, I guess those just exist in the modern day in Crash Bandicoot-verse. I think jumping to the middle one will be the fastest way to do that section.
Uh oh. Okay, I made it. Should have just left it in virtual reality. Yeah, probably. Although that begs the questions of how they're like getting crystals in them. I don't know. Ugh. Cortex went to the uh, digital world. Met some Digimon. I dropped crystals everywhere. That's what I was going to say. That was the rest of the bit. I'll bet there's probably a Digimon named, like, Neomon. And regardless of what it looks like or what its nature is, that would be the one that he would want, just because he's got an ego. The game's lore was not that focused back then. Was it ever? I guess it was a little more focused in the in the in the trilogy era, but even then it never really felt like they took the crash game stories that seriously. I like the series best when Uka Uka was not involved, which I wonder if if people shared the same sentiment, because he's basically not involved in this one. That said, this one's story is also just kind of all over the place. It meanders a lot. I like when bad guys get to be, like... I, it's fine if they have co comedic moments, as long as they're still, like, a threat. I feel like a lot of, a lot of like, jokey villains just kind of stop being a threat. Cortex being, like, probably the most obvious example. Eggman also went in that direction a lot as the Sonic games went on. I mean, he's always a little goofy. He's this, this, like, pudgy scientist dude. It gets old just watching him, like... Awaken ancient magics, fail to control them, and then just eat shit over and over again, though. Another reason Sonic Adventure 2 is my favorite Sonic game. It really, really gives us some of that Eggman lore. That you know we all crave. Don't deny it. doing bad on masks this run. Why did I do that?
This level takes a lot of attention. Not to say I'm not paying attention. I am. I promise I am. It's just there's a lot of complex stuff happening at any given moment in this level compared to other levels in this game. That's a lot of rapid fire twitching for like just a very couple sec first couple seconds of this level. They really waste no time giving it to you on this one. Which I guess makes sense because this is like the gauntlet. This is the final level of the, of the game. Still got my mask. I should probably spin as little as possible because I move slowly when I spin. I mean the, the the purple spin, spin turbo. Sonic Generations is the most recent example of that not happening with the time e time eater. Did he not lose control of the time meter? I, I don't remember pr pretty much anything of the plot of Sonic Generations. I swear I pressed the button. He did. She didn't spin. Generations is the only, like, modern Sonic game that I've played. It was okay. It didn't blow me away. I guess this sounds kind of contradictory to my experience with, like, every other video game series. But the plot is kind of the only reason I ever liked Sonic. I mean, obviously, I couldn't, I couldn't stick with it if the gameplay was just a a abysmal, but... Yeah, I liked Sonic Adventure 2 because it was willing to have a serious story when uh, other other mascot platformers were not. And they're still not, really. I wish Sonic would go back to having, like, good, dramatic, engaging stories. I don't think he will. I don't think they know how to do that again. Adapt the Archie comics. Bring back Sally Acorn. Make Eggman, like, serious and scary. Give him a big metal arm.
Was that the one where his backstory was that he was, like, fused with a rotten egg? mask. Oh, how much optimization is this part going to take? I hope not too much. <gasps> ah! You know what? That's probably... I should just tank it through that. I should just go right through that. Okay, I'm gonna have to, like, memorize that whole last section. Is that at least gold? That's platinum. Great! I'll take it! How are your hands feeling? Oh, they're fine. That's more of a mental game. That last section, you, you really just gotta really pay attention to what's happening around you. It's not so much a hands thing. Well, I'm glad that, that, that that's taken care of, because I didn't want to do that whole last section again. I feel like they had some mercy with that level. Alright, so that's Platinum 144. Ten seconds off of the uh, dev time. This one has a shorter platinum, t uh, sh shorter sapphire time, so. How bad, the question is how bad is the cortex section going to be? I now have to do, like, a shitty, awkward, controlling cortex section, and then that gauntlet that I just did only harder. I don't like playing as cortex in this game. Give him a gun. Give him a magnum. I won't let me fail. I mean, fail differently. I mean, oh, crash. Okay, what is this? I, okay, I need to hit the thing. I don't need to worry about the right crates. Hit more thing. This is going to be a whole lot of hitting things. This is going to be like a trigger the switch level. All right, cool. That's the sapphire dude. He he jumps on the TNT and then he like he goes back to hit the switch. What's he doing? Who get who did these sapphire times? Oh, that ate my mask. I gotta check. Nope, there are no time crates in there. Don't have to worry about that pile. I gotta know for sure, though.
Uh, okay, that's fine. I don't need to. I don't need to blow those up. I can just go around. That's what I can do. Whoa! Slipped. It's like slippery climb again. Except this time it's Cortex doing it. That really was his commute to work if he ever leaves the castle. He's just got to climb up like Crash does. What am I doing? I probably made that joke before. Do a crash one speed one speed run one of these days if I really wanted to. Since the uh, crash one stream, the files were kind of ruined by bad audio. No, I need that. <sighs> and that's another thing I gotta shoot. All but the final Crash 1 stream was ruined by uh, some audio issue. And the Tony Hawk 3 stream was also... Those streams were also ruined by bad audio, so... I thought about going, that, going back and doing uh, something with that again as well. Oh, I can make that. I don't need to wait. Wait, what do I do then? I, do I have to wait until it's in the right position before I can even shoot it? Because that'd be pretty lame. Anytime you have to, like, stop and wait for something to be in the right position just makes it feel like the level was not made with time trials in mind. Even though, in theory, every level in this game should have been made with time trials in mind. Yeah, I need you to be over to the left, or else I can't, like, jump on you in the right place. Well, that's a little shitty. That's also pretty shitty. I don't know why I thought that would work. Maybe four hours was overselling it. Maybe I can get this done in three or less. We're under an hour and a half. Hour and a half now. Never mind that I'm failing the first jump to the first TNT block. I was so consistent just five minutes ago. There we go. Cortex has this weird movement quirk where if he does it on he does his his thing on the ground, he can he can jump out of the end of it. But only if he does it on, on the ground. If he does it in the air, he has to do this little like flail dance. <sighs> That's too far. Jin is seen in, like, the final cutscene of this game. Or the, the cutscene of, like, Crash's creation. Even though he, he, like, shouldn't have been there in the original. Maybe I'm misremembering that. No, because they're all three there during the flashback tapes. This game retcons it so, that, like, Engine was always there. You just didn't see him in the first game.
technically, I could hit that switch and then get the clock to save myself, like, frames. I, I didn't get anything I wanted. Why do I keep doing that? Like, it's gonna work this time. No, come back! I need you! Flashback tape implies that Engine came in for a job interview while Crash was running that te the test gauntlets. Is that what happened? Maybe I'm misremembering. I, we could we could like rewatch the original ending before we watch the the final ending if we want to. I don't think I watched the. Uh, I think there's three endings. You get the first one by beating the game. You unlock the second one by doing everything except the relics? Like, by getting all the collectibles, maybe. Because I have that one. I have the second one. And then the third one is, like, full 100%. You've done absolutely everything except the dev relics completion. That's what we're trying to get, is that third one. And I think I didn't watch the second one. I think I was waiting until I had, like, until I was totally done. And I was just going to watch all of them. I'm really wasting my masks here. I want to one-cycle that. I don't know if I can, though. I'm just gonna do that. That seems smart. hate that that bird is so... I have to stop it in such a specific spot in order to progress. I guess you can jump out of it because he doesn't do the little the little panic dance as long as he like starts and ends on the ground or as long as he ends on the ground even because if you position yourself just right on a uh, after a jump so that you you end up ground level like on a ledge you don't get the uh, the end lag and lag, and lag, like it's Smash Brothers. So given the fact that uh, Crash is able to volley energy projectiles back at the firer. 
Does that suggest that Crash Bandicoot could defeat Ganondorf? I guess he would get through the volley bit and then it wouldn't matter because he doesn't have light arrows. But that's when Coco invents Wumpa arrows for him and that, that does the trick. That seals Ganon. Over here, stupid bat. I keep... I keep still thinking that'll work. There's like a brief moment where, in the opposite direction, these things still cover both lasers. I'll bet it is possible to get through without waiting for them. I'll bet that's what the, uh, that's what the dev time does. So what's after this? I'm still in the middle of Book of Mario that I've been putting off for a long time. The, uh, N64 one. I haven't done any of the tri I haven't done any more of the trials streams in a while. I mentioned I have the uh, Mario 64 beta ready to play. I haven't looked into the Majora one yet. But I think those are both on the way. That was a bad idea. I can't I can't rush that second one. Bad is the real final boss. I'll get it eventually. I need to get the timing right. It's also like I've mentioned. There's, like, ideal spots to burn masks when you're playing as the non-Crash and Coco characters. Because, uh, they can't get invincibility, so there's no real incentive to get all the masks. Also, they lose them as soon as you go back to, uh, Crash or Coco halfway through the level, so... You want to find places to use them to save time. Nope, come back! Ah! Threaded the needle. It's weird to think that I'll be, like, all caught up with the Crash series after this. I'll have played basically ever... I'll have streamed basically every Crash game after this point. Originals and remakes. Oh, what? No. I... Look how proud of himself he is. He's so happy to be here doing this. Unfortunately, I went slightly too far ahead, so uh, now I must... I can shoot the block but I can't, like, walk all the way up to it. Otherwise, the clock disappears.
Is that even worth going for? It's kind of hard to tell. I gotta go, like, right away to make that. Corfex wants to be E Honda so bad. What with the like the big goofy grin? Uh, what? Okay. What am I supposed to do there? Maybe I can dash through the crates and make the platform? those nitros. They looked tasty. Why do I keep doing that? I don't really follow the channel, but, uh, there's a channel called Designing For that, like, analyzes writing tropes and, I think, uh, game design stuff. And they did a, a video on Cortex called Designing For Pity. too close. I think I've watched some of his other videos. I don't remember which ones. Come on. over there. There we go. I'm activating that too early is what's going on. If I if I get closer before I do it, I'm I'm sure I can one cycle it. It looks so possible. this was abundantly obvious the uh, last stream but the cortex part ended up being the hardest part of the crate escape I maybe that's not true I, I just I didn't have to optimize the crate part because I guess I had optimized the cortex part enough to not have to worry about it
wonder if it'd, it'd be worth playing any anime games just on my own without Jack. I know you've recommended the uh, the Bleach PSP games, Darian. There's also the Bleach uh, DS games that I've always been interested in, like showing off. But I want I wanted to do the multiplayer because Jack and I used to like actually play the multiplayer on the DS. Unfortunately, DS emulation makes playing multiplayer very difficult, so uh, we never found a way to to like stream them in a way that we could play against each other, which is kind of what you would want to do in a fighting game. Dragon Ball Evolution PSP. That's on the list? I just... Again, I don't know how we would do that multiplayer. Okay, yeah, I can I can do that. Uh, hmm. Okay. I, I see what they want me to do, and I don't like it. But I'll do it. Just relearning the level that I haven't played in like a year. I haven't looked into PSP multiplayer. Maybe that's easier than DS. In terms of emulation. DS Download Play was such a nice feature. I, I wish the Switch could have that. I wish that, like, both players didn't need to own the game in order to play multiplayer on the Switch. Because that is kind of a limiter for a lot of games multiplayer. Not even on the Switch, just in general. Both people having to own the game. I wait... See, I spent a, a, several seconds there... If I don't either mask through or, uh, or find the way to one-cycle it. That's no bueno. I don't think I need to waste those seconds. Fire left. Okay, now here's the here's the cocoa part. Now with added nitros. Boy, it would have been swell to blow up on one of those immediately. Wouldn't that just been grand? where I press the button. I swear she should have been spinning. That will at least be a short cocoa section. 
That's not too bad. I'm gonna jinx it by saying that. Oh, it's not so bad. Don't think I can one cycle that. I think I'm gonna have to wait for the last platform to go through another time. Still didn't do it. It looks so possible though, just if barely. Ah, okay. I gotta jump for that. We're getting there. We're making progress. We're gonna do it. Three hours, that's the goal now. I can't wait to uh, just have just gotten really lucky on the previous level. We're gonna get to the end of this one and only have gold. And then sometimes this bat just doesn't want to cooperate. It's an interesting design choice to make the crates slightly concave so that you can, like, see inside of the crates that they're adjacent to. Like, notice that I can see the, the side texture of the TNT here through the, the yellow crates. I don't know if there's any particular spot that that's especially helpful, but it seems like there might be cases it would be. I feel like I can go faster if I blow up those nitros, but at the same time, I can't go too fast doing that because then I enter the, like, the remains of the explosion and die. I don't like how long explosions linger in this game. Case in point. Still not. I'm not going to stop going for it, though. Because even if it's not, even if I have to spend a mask there, that's probably the best place in the level to spend a mask.
That was the place that I didn't need to spend a mask. I am now maskless. Sly Cooper 1 had time trials. Only they really, like, weren't worth it. Because all you unlocked was developer commentary. Which is something, I guess, but... I don't really want to have to play through a level, like, a third or fourth time. Just to hear people talk about the level. Uh, that was the place that I should have done it. Well, I have both masks now. I guess I could also spend them here. I could, like, burn both in that spot to save time. I don't need to get to the end of that with two masks. Look, they're already gone. So I, I should find places to burn those. Maybe we should slide jump there. Maybe that'd be better. people make shiny hunting interesting. Do they just podcast? Is it just, is it the equivalent of just like a just chatting stream every time a streamer does shiny hunting? Because this is about on that level. Like at, watching Crash Bandicoot time trials, it's a lot of repetition, a lot of nothing new happening. It makes me wonder what the appeal could be. And then I remember that there are people who just do shiny hunting streams, and I don't understand the appeal of those streams either. But they must have something going on that people like. Here's a stream that uh, I haven't done, but have considered doing. Like, an insane stream idea. Every Pokemon game at the same time. If my computer could handle it... I'd be doing everything up through Gen 5. On the same controller, like, all bound to the same controller on the same screen at the same time. That'd be wacky. That sounds taxing. No, not like, not like full playthroughs. It'd probably be a one-off stream. I just think it'd be a funny thing to try.
a full playthrough would be a bad idea just because the, like, the lengths of the games are so different. Also probably be like, just running into a wall constantly on 10 of the 15 streams, screams. I'll get the right word eventually. Be a first, though. I bet no one else has done it. What? I don't know what to do about those nitros. Either I just eat the hit, or I have to play, like, slow, full, slow and carefully to, like, not get hit by them. I guess I should go slow. I think that's... Is it... Yeah, the masks save more time in the... in the laser parts. I should save my masks for that. I'm even begging the question. Why is Aku Aku helping Cortex at this part of the story? Don't worry about it. Story doesn't matter. That was a that was a dumb thing to do, shooting that bat there. Hello, Hattori. Common goal audience, I guess. Could that not also be said for something like this, though? Maybe it's just gambling. Maybe it's just the, the appeal of gambling. People want to see something lucky happen. As opposed to uh, something skill-based, which, as you can see clearly on your screen right now, this stream is nothing but a demonstration of skill. That was a good cycle. That might be the one cycle I've been hoping for. It's, it, it might be possible. It's not pleasant, but it's possible. I did it! Yes! Now, I can do this. I don't need to wait for that one. I knew it was possible. That's probably the optimal way to do it. That saves a lot of time. All right, here we go. Uh, 38, 39 seconds for Coco. Now I just gotta not make any like big dumb moves. Can I avoid making big dumb moves? No, I can't. Go too high! All dimensions up until rock blocked. What is rock? I, I, th I think I did rock blocked recently. That's a dingo dial level, isn't it? Is that in the ice world? Because I remember the ice world was awful. The ice world sucked and the... Uh, and the, the snacks dimension sucked. Those were the really bad ones. <laughs> Dig it out with Crash T-Rex. Okay. So I think... Is that past the ice world? 
I don't remember the order of the worlds in this game, even though I just went through them at the start of this stream. I do remember that level being very, very long. What uh, what's your opinion on the on like the boulder levels in the original Crash games? Are you not a fan? I know those are divisive. I've heard from a lot of people like that's the only thing they remember about Crash Bandicoot is those levels. And they list those levels as the reason that they don't like Crash Bandicoot. I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe that's. Maybe uh, Jack is one of those people. I don't remember if he listed that as like a main complaint as to why he doesn't like Crash. I do remember that Jack doesn't like Crash. Love the boulder chases, hate the scuba, le scuba levels. I agree. Ah, oh, I knew that was gonna happen at some point. Yeah, I hated the I hate the water levels in Crash. I hate the water levels in most every game. Mostly by the fact that I just you get stuck on shit all the time in the in the Crash Three water levels. There's just, like, invisible little lips and wacky geometry everywhere. But also, I think people don't like water levels in video games because it's just so much slower than the regular platforming is. Just inevitably. It's always the case. Mario. Uh, Crash. What else has it? A Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong wasn't too bad compared to other water levels, but still, even then. About the only time I didn't really mind water was in Spyro, because Spyro can charge underwater. He can actually, like, move quickly. And that's great. That's all I need. I just need to be able to move actually, like, quickly underwater. And then it's fine. underwater sections for Sonic was just he moves slower and also you have to like keep track of a breath meter so it's just the same as the like uh, the non underwater sections but slower and more methodical which is definitely what you want playing a Sonic game it is slow and methodical that was sarcasm Four seconds longer than my previous best. Ah. We're gonna get there. We're gonna do it. I know it doesn't look like it, but we're making progress. I've said this before, the levels in this game are so long compared to original Crash levels. It just every le every single level is a gauntlet in its own way.
It's like they took, uh, it's like they took Stormy Ascent and said, Hey, what if every level? And they didn't need to do that. I did it. Ah, oh, and then I wasted a mask! Man! I'm mad. I'm disappointed in myself for that. I save so much time if I can just barrel through that second set of lasers. I can barrel through the TNT at the end of this section. That'll save some time if I keep my mask. Yeah, right there. 44 seconds. Nope. Ah! Okay, that's fine. I didn't need the spinny mask. In fact, I can probably just skip it. Maybe I should just skip it. Maybe that would be faster. I just... Okay. I do actually have to be careful about going too high. I, I have to remember that now. biggest ick for the Crash 4 time trials is the real-world timer for moving hazards. Yeah, I never quite figured out how that works in this game. In the original Crash 3, I think it was consistent, because the whole level would load all at once. So every time you started a level, it would be the same every time. I think in Insane Trilogy, the first load was different, but every load after that would be the same. And this game, it just seems different every time. I don't know what's going on. But it's annoying because there are... You're right, there are still things that you have to, like, t time when you start a level in this game. And a lot of the time, there's just no real way to do it. And it's kind of baffling because they knew... Obviously, they played the hell out of this game getting the, the dev times they did. They knew that was, like, gonna be an inconsistency. Surely they could, like, come up with a way for their game to load such that it is the same at the start of every level. Or every time you start a level, all the, t all the object timings are the same. And they just, they didn't do that. The biggest oversight of all Crash Bandicoot, like, time trial stuff, to me, is the, uh, the racers on the motorcycle levels in Crash Warped. Which, when you pick up a time trial clock, when you start a time trial, in my opinion, they should just disappear. They should be off the track. Because if they don't do that, which they don't, then the optimal thing to do is to just, like, spend the start of every attempt just waiting for them to clear the track. And so that's what you end up doing. And it's super tedious because it adds, like, a minute and a half to every single time you make the attempt. Now, that's doable in, uh... It sucks, but it's more doable in emulation because at least you can, like, speed up the clock and only wait, like, I don't know, 10, 20 seconds for them to do it. You can't do that in the remakes. And it's baffling that this is not something that they would have changed in the remakes since they had the opportunity to do so. Forty-seven seconds. Another thing that baffles me that they didn't do in the remakes is, uh... Sorry, I need, I need to focus now, just for a second. Uh-oh. They changed it a little bit. I'm still good for now. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's just let's just do that. Why don't I just? Yeah, I can just not wait for the TNT to explode. That's way better. Oh yeah, that's way faster. Come on, platinum, sub one thirty. Okay. So five more seconds I need to shave off. I, I can do that. That's doable. We're close, but we're not done yet. I wonder if I could have done that on the previous version of the level. It's just, like, tank that hit. Because that's way faster not having to wait for the, the bouncing things to go through. Alright, all relics. But not all platinums. We gotta, we gotta go back. We're not done yet. You know what? For thematic sake. There we go. We'll finish it with our boy. Uh, I was saying, the other thing it baffles me that they didn't do in the Insane Trilogy, the remaster, the remakes, is that, uh, they don't let you restart levels, which is such an obvious thing to let you do. And it's especially a pain with the, the motorbike levels, because, uh, I won't let me fail. if you, like, I miss a crate, if you're going for the gem, crash. you can't even kill yourself. If you fall down a pit, you respawn, so you have to either finish the entire race, or, like, go all the way back out to the warp room and back in again. They did such a good job with the remasters, and then there's things like that that just beg the question of, like, did you play your game? Oh boy, he's going, he's going speedy. Ah. Yeah, no, they, they do it for time trials, but not for the gem. Which, even if, like I do, you go, like, super slow and methodical just to try to get all the crates on those motorcycle levels... There'll still be times where, oh no, I had to go fast here, because I had to, like, make this jump or something. I'm gonna keep up with you. You're not gonna get ahead of me. I pressed the wrong button. See, now I got a rival. Now I got something to measure myself against. I got a Deku. I, Bakugo, shall not lose. I'm sorry, that's a dumb anime. I shouldn't be making dumb anime references. It wasn't even funny. Darian. Uh, what? Do you, so, uh, do, do you read One Piece? Do you watch it? Or are you just, like, aware of the sequence of events in the series? I'm still in the middle of Dressrosa and uh, Bartolomeo. I don't remember who voices him in the Funimation dub. It's not Chris Sabat, but the way he's portrayed reminds me of Kuwabara a lot. I don't think it's Chris Sabat. I'm not positive, though. No, it's not him. I like having the ghost. It kind of gives me a very loose idea of how I'm doing. But uh, then there's also times where even the, even the platinum ghost just kind of, like, fucks up. And lingers at a spot for a few seconds, and that's when I usually pass it. Yeah, I'll just die there. That's fine. I didn't need to live.
I'll bet I pass this guy at the laser part because of my brilliant, like, run through the laser strategy. That's where it's gonna happen. Yeah, even if I don't get the boxes, it is definitely faster to, uh... It's definitely faster to just go through that. Why do I... I keep doing that, and I keep wasting a life because of it. If I can get Nitro-Fueled Shiny, I can get this. Nitro-Fueled Shiny? What do you mean, Shiny. I never 100%ed Nitro Fueled. I think I did the original CTR at some point in my life. I kind of I kind of got overwhelmed by all the stuff to do in Nitro Fueled, and I've been putting it off, putting off getting back to it. Break. Tiny version of the game which only a, a few select people can play. Huh? What do you, what do you mean? Elaborate. I don't know what you're, what words you're saying. Is this like a promotional version of the game or something? Or is this like an online ranking thing? Is it like Elite Smash? Ah! Play on PlayStation, so the Platinum Trophy, I call them Shinies. Oh. oh. Okay. Does that not necessitate an explanation every time you mention them, though? I don't remember what the... I guess I wouldn't know what the achievements in Nitro Field are, because I don't... I have the Switch version. Ah! I need that crate broken! Man! That was such a good run otherwise. I just dead. I just, I just trapped myself. I thought you were being serious, Darian. I wouldn't know. Well, if I had this on anything except for the Switch, I would... This would be the point that I would, like, platinum it. Or I would, like, 100% the achievements. I guess. There's probably, like, there's probably, like, obscure achievements that I would need to hunt down in this game. There were some for the Insane Trilogy. Okay, good run. Good cycle. Mostly. Fumbled a little bit there. Cortex got some weird physics. Even if it's just jumping, if he lands on the ground, he's fine. Oh no. They know where they know how to like burn the masks to get through the lasers too. They're doing the same thing I did. That means I'm gonna have to do it. Unlocking Entropy is ridiculous. Have to do the Entropy Ghost Trials and do that. You basically have to do the Time Trials for each track twice. Because the first... Like, the... How, what, how do the Time Trials work? The first one is the, like, the Staff Time and the... the... 
Or do you have to have a relic before you can do the entropy ghost? Is that is that what you mean? I remember there being a lot of repetition, a lot of doing the same stuff over and over again, especially when it came to time trials. Like, the stat- is the time trial- is the staff ghost mode, like, totally separate from relics? Like, it doesn't have the time crates and everything. Good time. Got all the crates that I need. I'm keeping up with you, you dumb ghost. Ah! Ah! Okay. So he's doing it perfectly. That, or he just, he like goes right through without... I guess he just goes through on a single mask, that second laser part. That's- I guess that's probably for the best, time-wise. I guess I should just do that, too. Yeah, he's, uh, significantly ahead of me now. Man! That's fine. Still going for it. 43 seconds. That is- I felt like I did so badly, and yet that's like a good time relative to the previous times I was doing. I missed. Uh, you have to do the time trial, then you have to beat your own ghost, and then you have to do the entropy trials. Get the best time relic and then beat the ghost. Okay. So is, is, is it the same as the time trial relic mode? The entropy ghosts? Do they have the, like, the time stop crates on the track for the entropy stuff? I remember the process to unlock the, uh, the, the metal crate was also, like, ludicrous. Because you had to find the, like, super hidden box on every single level. And there's, like, a thousand levels in that game. I just, just kill me. End it. Separate. Okay. So if you want to get everything, you have to do the time trials three times minimum. You have to do the relic stuff, and then you have to do the normal time trial, and then you have to do the entropy time trial. Yeah, I'm remembering why I got, like, sick of that game's, like, shenanigans before I 100%ed it. Waste of a mask. Waste of another mask. At end it. This isn't worth it. Cortex could really use a soft lock-on button. 
I guess. You know, it would be great if I could just choose which shot I fired instead of having to hit an enemy twice. It's kind of weird because the, uh, the trigger buttons, the ones used for every other character's special ability, Dingadile Suck and uh, Tana's Grapple, are completely unused for Cortex. They, they just do nothing for him. So, like, it could have been that the, the attack button does the platform and the shoulder button does the bouncy. I, they could have just done that. It would also be great if I wasn't fighting level geometry on Cortex levels, because I seem to do, do have to do that on every Cortex level. That was just me being impatient. I think, you know what I think it is? I think his shots, like, hit walls all the time, because they're so big. And I think they made them big so that the hitbox would be really generous for hitting enemies. So it's great when you want to, like, be sure that you hit an enemy, but it's bad if you're trying to quickly and accurately hit, oh, say, boxes. Specifically boxes in a tight area where you're liable to just hit a wall instead. can't wait for uh, Gex to get its re-release on the Switch, and then everyone to meme about it. And then for the bigwigs to say, well, people sure like this Gex game, we should make another one. And then for Gex 4 to be, like, played by nobody and reviewed horribly. Because everyone only liked it ironically. He's just Bubsy by another name, that's Gex. Someone asked me to describe what Gex was today because they actually didn't know. And I described him as halfway between James Bond and Bubsy. Uh, yes, Gex is getting a re-release. What's the, what, what's the name? The Limited Run Games announced a bunch of, like, uh, ports and re-releases earlier today. Well, I guess I heard about them earlier today. It was uh, the Gex Trilogy. It was uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Clock Tower and the old Jurassic Park games. I would like a Croc like re-release. I don't know if it'll ever happen because Croc was sadly not that popular. But, uh, you know, A, I thought it was very charming despite the game's flaws. And B, maybe with some polish the game's flaws could be made better. Maybe they could finally give Croc, like, a good game. Because I love those games, but I understand why people don't. They kind of play like shit. Let's, let's make them not play like shit. Because that's their only problem. You keep everything else about Croc the same and just make him control like a real character. Mmm. Beautiful. Perfect game. 10 out of 10. Oh. 8 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Is it, I'd, I'd like it. I want a good croc game, damn it.
ka splat! Oh, I can't go that high. I... This must be a coincidence. I swear the croc sound effects are, like, one for one. They're identical to the sound effects that, uh... That what's-her-name? Tiny Kong uses in Donkey Kong 64. It just sounds like the same voice doing the same lines. It is a coincidence, but man, they're close. I streamed Croc 1. I did that uh, a little while ago. I did that solo. And uh, Jack and I are planning to do Croc 2. Sometime soonish. Soonish being like within several months, probably, but. We're going to at least start it using the Omniplay feature, which is a terrible idea. I think the novelty will wear off immediately, and Jack will just set the controller down, and I'll end up playing it, but... Should be funny for a few minutes. I felt like I was- I was doing so well. I was making the- the one cycle, and now I'm just not anymore. But I have to. Look how far ahead of me he is. I can't be beaten by a ghost. I have too much pride as a member of the living. Imagine going around your life, and everywhere you go, all the time, is a ghost of you that only you can see going about your entire day just faster. Making you feel bad about how unproductive you are by comparison. Bad bat cycle. You drew one piece of art today? Great. He drew six. I hate this bat. This bat is just the bane. Not even my bane, just the bane. This bat's timely. That bats were always in the right spot. It's just this other stupid bat. I guess because I get to him at different times, but, you know. If he was polite, he would work with me anyway. What do you think Cortex's hobbies are? What do you think he does when he's not, like, creating mutants, trying to take over the world? I'll bet he knits. He seems like the kind of person who would, who would like, knit a sweater. Out of real animal fur. Just to piss off PETA. Whatever. Well, I'm on track with him now. How come his platform is, like, faster than mine? Yeah, he's on just, like, a slightly faster cycle than me. Man! That sucked. It's a totally pointless missed cycle. Jersey Devil would make a nice comeback. 
decrypted? I'm confused. Was there like a Jersey Devil video game character that I'm forgetting about? PS1 game, okay. I vaguely remembered something like that, but not in very much detail. There's a lot of like mascots that never really got anywhere. Like Rocky Rodent. I remember him for just how unhinged that one looked. the kamikaze squirrel. Yep, that existed. Arrow the acrobat is one most people I think know. Scunny. The DOS mascot. Y'all remember DOS gaming? No, I know you don't. Only I remember DOS gaming. I think Tomba was one of the ones that is getting a re-release. I don't know who Tomba is, but I remember hearing that name earlier today. Is that like the is that like the fusion dance of Timon and Pumba? Is Tomba? I'm gonna decide for myself that that's Tomba, because I like that what I said better than whatever it sure it probably is. What have I played? I played Emperor's New Groove on PS1, which obviously is not like that kind of mascot platformer, but it was made by the same developers as Croc, as we found out. And it was just a nice, well-made platforming game on the PS1. I played Rascal. Which was, uh, terrible. I remember only ever playing it for, like, 30 minutes as a child. And, uh, then I tried to stream it to give it another chance. And I was only able to play it for about 30 minutes on stream. Probably the worst game I've ever streamed. Rascal was bad. Oh. <sighs> Pandemonium. I don't think I've heard of that one. Any of you guys got opinions on uh, Vector Man or Pulse Man? I know there were other platformers on the Sega Genesis, but I just... I didn't like any of them. I tried them. They were on, like, the, the Sonic collections sometimes on, like, the GameCube. But uh, I tried them out and they just weren't very fun for me to play. I didn't like Earthworm Jim. You want to talk about some wacky bullshit, there's, a. Uh, Ah, uh, what was the pencil called? It was like Crazy Woody or something?
I streamed Frogger. Does Frogger count as a platformer? I don't know if it does, because it's not... It doesn't really share a lot of the, like, expected platforming mechanics. Alright, 34 seconds. That's a great time, but I'm still a little bit behind. Nope, that was too early. I didn't want to do that. Oh, man. I get a great Cortex run, and then I just, I fuck it up immediately as the Bandicoots. I guess that's fitting. You know what? It's because I, I stopped playing as Coco. Coco knew the level. She's done it once before. Hit the... As far as platformers go, there I know there were other, like, good platformers on the Genesis. They were called the Lion King and they were called Aladdin. Those were the only games I owned on the Genesis that were not Sonic games. They're also very difficult. I don't think I ever, like, completed those games. I never beat either one. See, now I'm so close to the ghost that it's blocking my vision for some of the platforming. Hit the crates! I hit... Why? That just makes or breaks the run. That little alcove there. If I hit those on the first try, I one cycle, and if if I don't, I'm fucked. It's good that I'm getting this done today because there is a uh, heat advisory for the next several days. Hope y'all are doing okay. Yeah, he's just a little bit ahead of me on these platforms, and I don't know how. I guess he got here just a little bit sooner, and so they spawn sooner? Ah! Oh. I never played the Super NES Aladdin. I guess I should be grateful for that, because that was by all accounts the worst one. Or the worst of the two. They had similarities. I think they used the same sprites, but they were, like, but by design, completely different games. And, uh, infamously, didn't have a sword in the Super NES one. You could only throw apples.
What other uh, what other tie-in games were there? I had a Bug's Life on the N64, which was very difficult, but that didn't stop me from trying to play it anyway. Uh, you could save it if you had a save pack, but I didn't have a save pack, so I just tried to beat it in one sitting over and over and over again. Never did. Couldn't do it. I've heard said that the uh, Toy Story games from that era weren't bad. I've never played them, though. Anyone remember the Buzz Lightyear, like, Star Patrol cartoon? Anyone watch that? I didn't. I always thought Buzz Lightyear was kind of a goober of a character. I didn't really like him. Like, if you take the- if you take the toy part out of Toy Story, what's left? You just got, like, generic archetypes of characters. That's all, like, Buzz Lightyear is. He's just a parody of Space Explorer-type characters. He doesn't have anything interesting going on himself. I don't care about what, what Zerg is doing in the Buzz Lightyear universe. The Buzz Lightyear universe is an afterthought. Oh, no! That was a mistake. I shouldn't... I... I... Yeah. That could have been the run. I fucked it up right at the end. We're getting there. We're getting close. You see how much he slows down at that section, though? Like, this... This, this ghost has the cortex part very optimized, but the crash part very not optimized so if I can just like keep pace with him reasonably if I can keep up then I'm, I'm done I got it I win even if I'm a bit behind I can still catch up in the second section I've also, like, uh, I finished, like, well after the ghost did, and still gotten the relic because I got more boxes than the ghost does. So even looking at him, the ghost is not everything. It's just a very, very loose guide. Uh, Hattori, since it sounds like you play a lot of uh, CTR, who's your favorite character? Who do you like to, uh, to, to drive as? I don't think I settled on a favorite. I don't remember who I played the most. I like that, like, everyone and their grandma is in the game, though. That That's cool. Frickin' Mega Mix is the most bizarre character to exist in Crash Team Racing. I like that the racing girls are, like, playable now. I also don't love their new designs, though. Like, they had an anime thing going on in their original designs. They also looked, like, all the same originally. I'm glad they look distinct now. I don't know. I, I just wish, like, at least one of them still looked kind of anime.
they all look, they all just kind of look too sultry now. Ah. Okay. So I haven't been hit by that in the air yet. I don't know if it has a hitbox while it's traveling. It might be just the spot that it hits on the ground that's dangerous. That was good, though. If I can do that, I do think that's better. Even though I was behind the ghost, like I was saying, I got an extra, like, two-second box that it didn't get. So I should be ahead of it in time by that logic. I walk up to the, uh, I have the time to walk into the second, like, uh, alcove, so I just, I do that. I, I don't have to worry about trying to hit it from a distance. Yes. I keep eating a mask use there, and I don't love that. It does seem to be speedy, though. All right, this is the run. missing that dynamite part. Once I got that, I'm golden. We'll get there. We'll do it. They knew who this, the audience of this game was. They knew they weren't making this game for kids. Although, I'd love to see a kid, like, play this game and, like, beat it. I don't need to complete it. I'm not expecting, like, that. I don't expect miracles. Kids surprise you, though. They got nothing but time. They'll put the grind in. Well, I say that. Maybe it's different these days. Back in my day, we had nothing to do. We didn't have internet, we didn't have mobile phones. If we had a shitty game and nothing else to do, we would play the hell out of that shitty game. To a degree. There was nothing gonna make me play too much like uh, Daydream and Davy or Rascal. Some games are beyond saving. If I were on a desert island with nothing to do but play Rascal, I would look at clouds. I'd look up and i say, hey, that one, that cloud right there, that one looks like a good game. You ever play Silent Bomber? I have never heard of Silent Bomber. What is that?
Here's something I feel like the only person for. I want more uh, Bomberman platforming games. There was only really one. I, Bomberman is not the most popular character around. I think people think of Bomberman, they only think of one type of game. And that's fair because he's, for the most part, only ever made one type of game. But uh, Bomberman 64 was an attempt at taking the regular Bomberman and making it 3D. And I, I guess people liked it. It was okay. But uh, there was no jumping. It was still a puzzle game at heart. Not, li not like a platformer. And then Bomberman Hero came along and was like a full proper 3D platformer. With jumping and throwing bombs and getting upgrades and types of bombs. It was cool. I love Bomberman Hero. I played the hell out of that. I want another one. But they never made another one, so to this day, Bomberman Hero is the only Bomberman game I care about. I don't know, the regular Bomberman gameplay just never seemed like enough to make a whole game out of, to me. It's fun for a few seconds. Oh, man, I just, I fucked that up. The tank minigame in Crash Bash is more interesting to me than the entirety of most Bomberman games. Crash Bash was cool. I'd love to see that again as well, but I don't think that's happening. Most is a single player. I never played Crash Bash with friends, so I don't really have a lot of perspective on it as a party game. But it was so cool to have a party game with a proper, like, single player, and even co-op campaign. <sighs> and especially, like, the, uh, the gem and crystal stuff. To be able to have minigames with depth to them, and, like, special challenges attached. That was awesome. I wish I could play Mario Party minigames with, like, depth and extra challenges attached to them. They don't do that, though. Did you play the campaign mode together? Or just the, just like, for fun party mode stuff? Oh, I kept my mask this time. I have two now. Will that help me? Probably. Ah! Oh! Ah, oh, man! I just... I confused myself with the ghost. I feel like if I don't have the ghost on, I'm gonna get- I'm gonna get too lax. I'm not gonna be anal enough about this first part. I'll try it. I'll try turning the ghost off. Well, now I'm just lonely.
Okay, that's good. If I spend both masks there, then I can get an extra two crate. Which, an extra two seconds is wonderful. That's a great thing to have. No! Ah, oh, why'd you shoot up? You're supposed to shoot forward, Cortex! That was a great run! You know what else would be nice about this on PC, is being able to play with a non-GameCube controller. It's fine. It hasn't caused, like, a ton of problems playing it this way. But uh, on a normal PlayStation-style controller, or just any controller with, like, the face buttons all, you know, in the, in the plush shape you'd expect. Now I'm getting distracted. Makes it easier to do things like the, uh, the square into circle, I guess. I guess they're not that much closer. Never mind. Probably won't make that big a difference. this alcove. This alcove is... Despite me dying everywhere else, this alcove is the worst part of the level. Because it make or makes or breaks the run just on this bullshit of whether he can shoot inside of it. It's like the end of Star Wars. Cortex has to shoot a hole the size of a womp rat and he just can't do it. He's just not Luke Skywalker. No one can make that. Look! See, it took him three tries. If he spent three tries in the Death Star Trench, the whole operation would have failed. Do you think Cortex would be the type to shoot animals for fun? Could we put him in, like, a little Elmer Fudd outfit? Give him a shotgun. Would that be too out of character? I know he experiments on them. I feel like he wouldn't have the guts to go out hunting proper. Like, he's, he's too prissy for that. That's true. That's he invented a, an animal, a, a bandicoot warrior to shoot animals for fun on his behalf. Actually, I think that was the uh, that was the Potoru's role, but close enough. There's a character who just kind of disappeared. It was Pinstripe. Ah, I hit some kind of geometry. I didn't see what. I guess in this timeline... He's, he's off with, uh... I guess in this timeline, he's off with Tana, right? Like, this is the canon timeline, so they just, they ran off together.
I wonder what else is theoretically different about this game's Tana's universe. Because I looked at, like, the gallery, the character gallery, and apparently the, uh, the female Entropy is from her home dimension, home universe. What if there's a female Cortex? What if there's a female Embryo? What's that gonna look like? Was Twin Sanity ever classed as canon? If we're talking about this game, then uh, this game, like, de-canonizes everything except the Naughty Dog games. Because they say the line, oh, this is the fourth time that we fought Cortex. You know, it felt like more than that, but nope, this is the fourth. So, yeah, well, also, uh, Nitrous Oxide and his race are in the game, so. Crash 1, 2, and 3, CTR, and then Crash 4. And then everything else was undone. What you know? I play Crash Bandicoot for the story. I don't know about you guys. I can't. Okay, well I can do that, I guess. So if the bat is all the way to the right, it's still technically doable. It's not ideal, but... I don't remember who showed it to me. Someone made Crash Bandicoot in a Street Fighter 6. And it looks probably about as good as you're, in, like, imagining. Which is not very. Everything after Crash 3 just became potty humor. Eh. It definitely got worse. And I don't think Crash 3 was... I think Crash 3 was kind of the start of it. Although, it was only, like, really noticeable after that point. You're right about that. Ah! Every time! I bet maybe if I used a mask, I could just go, like, under that. 37 is doable. Are you talking about, like, the time that I get to the crash section of the level? I don't know why I tried to fire there. I I've talked about, like, the writing and the handling of the crash games as I've been playing through the series. Sure, very old streams by now. This 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 game alone has gone on for like two years at this point. Probably over two years because I've just spent so long getting all of these collectibles and especially the time trials. But uh, Crash 3, I didn't love how it just kind of undid Crash 1 and 2 by retconning Uka Uka into, like, the big bad role. It really undermines the whole, like, premise of the series. Of this, like, of the science scientist invading. I mean, it's an old, it's an old trope, the science versus nature thing, and Sonic did it for, like, the first game as well. And then both of them just kind of grew out of that aspect of, like, the environmentalist kind of angle. Like, it was supposed to be the, the native... 
native life crash versus the invading scientist cortex. And then it just kind of became god versus devil. Good mask versus bad mask. It was fine, I guess, but... It also kind of undermines any story the series could have by having the main villain just be a joke all the time. Because Cortex was at least a little bit, like, intimidating and threatening in Crash 2, and I like that about him. And then he's just, he's just like a butt monkey in Crash 3 and on. That, that's, that's the point that he just became a joke. Wrath of Cortex started off very, very silly. With, like, a staff meeting of evildoers. Talking about evil stocks and how evil is underperforming. That was ha that was the first cutscene of Wrath of Cortex. And I like Wrath of Cortex as a game. That was a, that was a pretty poor first impression. The other plot points in the game were fine, just that dumb aspect aside. And then Twin Sanity went like full ridiculous. With like a full uh, and a full on attempted like comedy angle. Lots of toilet humor. Lots of fourth wall breaks, lots of Looney Tunes bits. CTTTR about the same. And then the, the other two PS2 games took it a step even further than that. And just like, not only did they have that kind of, that ridiculous Looney Tunes attempt at like toilet and gag humor all the time, they also, like, sabotage the characters. They felt the need to make Coco, like, this zany, wacky, pixie idiot girl who was upset. What was she obsessed with? It was, like, butter or something? It was not ideal, but... Might still be doable. I'm not going to give up just yet. I don't know why they felt the need to change the, uh, the character designs. Granted, I don't really know why anyone ever feels the need to do that, because it's never a good idea. It never works out. Like, no one, no one likes it. When you take an established series with a big fan base and then just completely change the character designs. I can't think of a single instance where people were, like, thrilled about that. People complained about it with Devil May Cry. God of War, maybe. That's not really, like, a big change in character design, though. That's just, like, Kratos getting older. He's got, he's got a dad beard. Why? Okay. So that time I knew what I was doing, he drifted to the right for some reason. That was not me. I promise I did not do that. Uh, I didn't play the PS2 games growing up. I rented Twin Sanity, and I, I, I did beat it as a kid. I had not played Crash of the Titans or Mind Over Mutant until I streamed them a couple years ago. And not, not even completely, I just, I gave them each a one-off stream. Same for the uh, handheld games, I had never played those before. But those weren't bad, those were inoffensive. They were fine attempts to transition Crash Bandicoot into 2D.
The PS2 games were just kind of bad, though. Controversial take. I'm going to include Twin Sanity in this. I thought Twin Sanity was pretty bad. It was the least offensive of them. And I did have some fun with it, which is better than not having any fun. It was also extremely glitchy and very clearly unfinished, though. Didn't they give Cortex a daughter? Cortex has a niece that is introduced in Twin Sanity. That's not the first game she appears in, is it? Wait, what's the first game that Nina is in? Is it one of the handhelds introduces her? I know Twin Sanity is the first console game that she's in. It's Cortex's niece who goes to, like, evil school. Again, really driving home the point that there's, like, organized evil. Like a whole Venture Brothers type system, except they're not gonna, like, go into detail about how this system works or anything. So it's just, like, what's the point? Who cares? That's the fun part. I want to see them go to stupid lengths to rationalize why there's a, a school for supervillains. That's the fun part. First appeared in Crash Purple. Ugh. That's not a game you want to premiere in. That Also, that I'm not, I'm not going to count that, because that's just like... Oh, here's this upcoming character. We're going to put him in this game as well. That's not like, hey, play this game to, to learn about this character. That wasn't like a selling point of the game. Just like, learn the mystery of Cortex's niece. Who is this mysterious girl? It's not like a game to introduce a character. It's just a game the character happened to be in. Like how Cream happened to appear in, like, the, uh... I guess... I guess Cream just kind of happened to appear everywhere. Be it Sonic... She was in Sonic Heroes, Sonic Advance, and, uh, Sonic X all at about the same time was Cream's introduction. And all three cases... don't, like, have... It's not like the, the Sonic team meet this new person. It's just one of those cases where they act like they knew her all along, and you're supposed to accept that as the as the player. Crash to Insanity was the closest thing to an introduction to the series that Nina had. And even then it wasn't much of one. It was just Cortex saying, Oh, we'll go visit my niece! And that was it. That was Nina's introduction. The devs were apparently conflicted as to what Nina's relation to Cortex would be. That's right, he does like- he does like stutter, doesn't he? That's bad. If they're trying to make a joke about some, like, developer in-joke, you don't put that in the game. That's so open to interpretation- that can mean anything. That could be a bestiality joke. I don't know why I went that direction. Well, it's Cortex, so yeah, I know why I went that direction, but... Prepare the female bandicoot! I'm so sorry. He says that. That's the line he says. Wasn't there... He also makes... There's a line about, like, his mother? Was that a running gag? Did they keep doing that throughout Twin Sanity? Of, like, him being vague about his relationship to Nina? I feel like I remember that being a thing, but... 
I remember having a lot of reactions to Twin Sanity. Those, those were like funny streams for all the wrong reasons. There's a part of me that now wishes that uh, Jack was there. Just to see his confused reactions to that game. I think it only took me two streams. It's a pretty short game. Okay, see you later, Hattori. Well, this ended up taking much longer than the first level did. Thanks pretty much entirely to the Cortex section. The gauntlet at the end, that's mostly fine. It's just this stupid part that I gotta be so persnickety about. reason Nina has the cybernetic gloves is because she was obsessed with cuddling animals? But what is that? How does that help? Oh. Well, that's kind of horrible. That's like the, uh... That's like a Elmer Fudd's daughter character in Tiny Toons. Was like the serial cuddler girl. We should have done the, uh... We should have done the Tiny Toons game on the uh, two players, one controller NES streams. We didn't. That wasn't one of the ones we did. I played a lot of that game. I liked the Tiny Toons game. Even if the first boss was incredibly lame. It was just the Cuddle Girl, and you had to run from her for, like, 30 seconds. And that was it. That was the boss. Still, good game, though. I wonder why that always... I say always, it's only been a couple times, but it, th that's like consistently the player three of Crash Bandicoot. Is the third character always got to have a grappling mechanic, be it Tana or Nina? did it once. I can't replicate it. I haven't been able to do it again. We know it's possible, though. Which means it's certainly what the devs do. Ah! Hit the... Alcove. Hate it. Worst part of the level. And because it's TNT, I can't just, like, run up like I can in the second alcove. I have to shoot it from a distance.
But so far, ah, oh, I lost a mask. Okay, I say I saved it there. Run's not dead yet. I guess those time stop crates are kind of redundant since they're so close to the level ending. Well, no, never mind. It stays stopped when we go to the crash section. Okay, here we go. This is the run. Ah! I didn't have another jump. We're so fucking close. We're almost there. We're over we're three and a half hours now. I was right. This is going to be four hours. We got the first one done so quickly, and I thought, oh, this will be easy. <sighs> How far along are you, Darian? How far have you gotten on your, uh, your crusade to 100% this game? You're not doing relics yet, are you? You're doing the, you're still doing, like, the gems and insane stuff? Geometry! The number of gems in this game is just crazy. I lo we looked at the, at the, like, inventory menu earlier. It's like 228 regular and also inverted. Which is almost 500 gems total. Go back to, like, the year 2000 and tell a Crash Bandicoot fan, in the future, there will be 500 gems in a Crash game. Then, at the same year, tell a Spyro fan, there will be 500 gems in Crash, and they'll say, what, that's it? I don't know if Spyro fans sound like Spyro. They probably do. I imagine Crash fans also sound like Crash. Right? You guys walk around saying like, ba 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 da Because I do that. That's right, that was another one. He went, Yee-haw! I miss, I miss Wacky Crash 1 Crash. He doesn't make a lot of noises in this game. 
Actually, he kind of stopped being as vocal after Crash 1. I kind of miss when he talked more. Crash 1 was like, like just the right amount of vocalizing. Any more and it would have been annoying. Again, it's weird to describe the series in, the, in this way, but the original Crash games kind of had a, a sort of reservation to their sense of humor. They were wacky, but they weren't, like, in your face about it, and that's why I think they worked as compared to the later Crash games, which kind of missed the point and just went, like, full Saturday morning cartoon ham. Crash Bandicoot was more the lines of, like, Looney Tunes, and then the later Crash games, they tried to make him more in line with Bubsy. And that was doomed to fail. Are they still making Bubsy games? Are the, are the devs still putting faith in that franchise? I can't imagine the new one sold well. Like, except, like, ironically, yeah, but is that enough? Did they sell well enough, ironically, for them to, like, want to make more? Surely the novelty has worn off by now. They've made, like, two or three modern Bubsy games. I can't believe I have to make that distinction. There's classic Bubsy and modern Bubsy. Why the fuck is Bubsy getting games? That, that sucked. That a terrible run. Yeah, I got two new games, but that's two more than a lot of these other franchises got. Tony Hawk only got one new game. Well, I mean, it, it got... I guess that's not true. It only got one good new game. It got Tony Hawk HD, which was bad, and it got Tony Hawk 5, which was bad. And then they did, a, they did remakes that were pretty good. And they had plans for another set of remakes, which would probably also have been even better. But uh, Activision pulled them to instead work on Call of Duty, so we never got Tony Hawk 3 plus 4. Maybe now. Maybe Microsoft will let it happen. Also, still waiting on Skate 3, on Skate 4. That's been, uh, that's in, been in production hell for, like years. I don't know how many years at this point. Like a decade? It's turning into a Duke Nukem Forever story, and I hope it has a happier ending. It's also such, like, it's a difficult series to get right, though, because people like the skate games, but you know... No. No, I can't even, I can't even make that comparison. Skate 3 was, like, a glitchy mess. But it was also a good game, so... It now has fans on both sides of the spectrum. The kind that want, like, just a good skate game. Which is very much possible. And the ones who want, like, a glitchy mess. Which is, har which is much harder to do intentionally. It's really hard to intentionally make a game jank that people like. Unless you go on full, like, goat sim, and even then, it's kind of less magical because you know it's intentional. If, if anyone's listening to this and has not looked up, like, Skate 3 glitch videos, I highly encourage you to look up Skate 3 glitch videos. Because that's some of the funniest shit on YouTube. That game is Pokemon Gen 1 levels of broken. I don't know what I expected to happen here. The bat's in the wrong place again.
What if I shoot that first? It'll be easier to hit the TNT. I'll have one less thing to accidentally bounce on instead. Okay. Good start. Little fumble. That's okay. It's not dead yet. I'm uh, still on my way through the Dressrosa arc in one piece. Finally got like a full scope of uh, like what an asshole Doflamingo is. And I still don't know if he's worse than Caesar. I mean, they're, they're both very strong contenders for just like worst human beings in the series. And there's a lot of really shitty human beings in One Piece. One Piece villains are something else. Okay, this is the run. We're gonna do it. No! Ah, oh, you, you were supposed to slide, Crash! <sighs> More so than JoJo villains. Ah! Uh, you know, I guess that's close. It's kind of hard to say. I guess Cars technically does, like, enslave people. He's got, he's got the mask to make, like, vampire minions. To then mass hunt humans to feed himself. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Kira's just kind of a serial killer. He's killed a lot of people, but... His crimes are not, like, countrywide in level. Yeah, I, I think One Piece villains are worse. On average. Dragon Ball villains, it's really kind of hard to measure because just everything is bigger in scale in Dragon Ball. Like, every Dragon Ball villain is, like, threatening to blow up the Earth, basically. Or some equivalent. Frieza was, like, the scummiest. Like, Frieza is infamously scummy. And that's, like, every One Piece villain is essentially Frieza. And I think it's very intentional. Like, Oda really wants you to... O Oda loves very hateable villains. Because that's kind of the point of the series, is it's these big, long arcs with big, long build-ups so that you can get the satisfaction of seeing these just raging assholes eat shit. That's what One Piece is all about. I feel like Boo is, he's evil, obviously, but it's almost more forgivable because he's just almost a mindless monster. He doesn't fully understand the scope of what he does. As opposed to someone like Doflamingo, who knows exactly what he's doing and the suffering that he's causing and delights in it. Okay, here we go.
That's not going to ruin Cortex's day, though. Look at him. Look at that grin. This time for sure. What are some Hunter Hunter villains? Which I acknowledge I'm not going to spoil anything because I know that you haven't seen Hunter Hunter. I'm trying to think, because that's a very non-traditional series. It doesn't necessarily have like a dedicated villain in every arc. Off the top of my head, there's there's a serial killer dude like like Kira. There's a monster dude like Boo. Those are like the two only really unambiguous villains that I can think of. Oh, the, like the main bad guy of like the series, kind of, but not really, because again, everything is very character based and ambiguous in Hunter Hunter. Yeah. I think the main three villains are like a serial killer, a monster, and like a mob boss. No one running any slave rings or, like, sacrificing the lives of children to test weaponized drugs. Yeah, this shit happens in One, one Piece villains are another, another, a whole nother level. I assume everyone in Naruto is just like crazy and power power hungry. I think the whole series is about like warring warring countries, right? And a dude trying to start wars between countries. My mask that time. I have two masks. Now, can I make use of two masks, is what I'm wondering. Wait, how did the ghost get turned on again? I turned him off. Do I have to turn it off for each individual character? Because Cortex's ghost is gone. Why does Crash still have a ghost? That's what cost that run, by the way. The, the, the ghost was, like, blocking my view of some jumps. Every Naruto villain is just a misguided good guy. Except maybe Orochibaru. Yeah. I think that's arguably the case in Yu Yu Hakusho, but from the sound of it, Yu Yu Hakusho handles it more tastefully. Yu Hakusho's villains are, like, the big three. Are a dude who's, like, racked with guilt. And, like, kind of buried in machismo. A dude who's also racked with guilt about, like, being a demon hunter. And, I get, what was Yomi's thing? He just kind of wanted power for the sake of it? Did he want revenge? I don't fully remember, like, Yomi's motivations.
it was almost like the the villain of the final Yu Hakusho arc was Yusuke, because like that was the, that was the big that was the climax. Was him realizing I don't know what I'm fighting for, and like dealing with his feelings. That was the finale of the final arc. Yeah, I guess I just had to turn it off for Crash too. That was just like a bug, I guess. I tried to go for the second row of TNT immediately. Okay, now will the crash go still be off when I get to that point again, is the question. I'm pretty patient. At this point, I'm getting tired. I'm sick of this level now. I want to be done with it. Bleach's bad guys are not particularly deep. We're still in the middle of the uh, Fullbringer arc, Jack and I. I don't think that the final villain has not been revealed yet. We're still dealing with a uh, with with a uh, bookmark guy. Who Jack just keeps calling the son of Aizen because he just acts like another Aizen. Ah! That was a waste of a mask. Waste of several seconds that I didn't need to do. I'd like the main villain of Inuyasha. Because he's not only he's he's one of those like Frieza like irredeemably evil motherfuckers. But it's with purpose. Like he, he's uh there, there's symbolism behind him. He's he's basically he's uh more or less metaphorical for like a, a toxic romantic partner. Like like an abusive boyfriend. Obviously on a much bigger, like, murders masses of people scale, but that's the meaning behind it, you know. How did this manga make you feel? Madara wants to trap the world in a genjutsu. That's, uh, when, when... Was that part of the of the comic? When did that happen? Like, what year was that was that plot point revealed? Because that sounds very similar to something in Code Geass. Madara probably came first. Code Geass was like 2006. I just I did shouldn't have wasted that mask. Also. Can I, I think I can make that jump without even, like, using that platform at all. This is very late for me to be, be discovering that. I bet someone's made, like, uh, like an eye power tier list. Between all the all the stuff in uh, all the visual jutsus in Naruto, versus like uh, you know Gios. Actually, a lot of a lot of Gios. There's multiple Gioses in Code Gios, not just the mind control thing. And a lot of them are eye based. So all of those.
I guess Aizen's hypnosis power counts. General General Blue's paralysis is probably pretty low on the eye powers tier list. Somehow I saved that. Surely there was like an eye based power in JoJo. I can't remember any offhand. Is this just what's what it's gonna be? Is me spending 15 minutes getting the same spot just just to scream? How many streams has that been? Has that just been every time trial stream? Because I feel like it's been pretty consistent. Maybe not every level, but every stream we have a level like that. Despite all this, I don't think this is the hardest level in the game. For the Platinum. I feel like some of the ones we've done before now have been worse than this. Rush Hour was really bad, and Crate Escape was really bad. I want to say one of those is probably the worst. Both because there's, like, a horribly difficult section at the very tail end of the level. I might say Rush Hour is the worst in the game. Didn't Rohan have an eye-based power? Yes, but no, because it wasn't his eyes that mattered. It was... It, the opponent had to, like, see his power. Which I guess... Yeah, that's the same as Aizen's. It's not Aizen's eyes that matter, it's the opponent seeing his power. My favorite Aijutsu belongs to Ka in, in the Jungle Book. I think he's a pretty cool ninja. Ka the Snake. I can make that without that platform. Also lost a mask there. That's not great, but... Doesn't necessarily kill the run. That killed the run.
Yeah, Pegasus has the Millennium. That's that's an eye power, Millennium Eye. He can read minds. Jack has uh, recently been reminiscing about some uh, choice aspects of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX dub, namely Sean Schemmel's roles, in which he plays like a, uh, a a white dude talking gangster. A video, uh, a video which is uh, now removed from YouTube, but it was saved as. Uh, the leg I believe it was the legend of hip hop Goku. Wrong button. Someone also edited that character's like Sean Schemmel dialogue over Goku Black for a couple scenes. That's still on YouTube. And uh, he also does like a bit character who is like a giant muscly dude. Who talks in like a really whiny, high pitched voice, making like ba baby sounds? I don't. Th uh, Sean Schemmel went a lot of weird directions with bit characters in Yu Gi Oh! GX. I guess he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He's got. He's, he's made, because he's Goku. He doesn't have to do anything ever again. Same as male Flanagan with Naruto. Sean Schemmel do the elephant who sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger in uh, in what? This is the first I've heard of such an elephant, but I'm intrigued. At least I'm one cycling this consistently every time now. That's great. I'd like that to continue. And once we're done with this, we'll be fully done with this game. It'll be over. I, you haven't seen that? No, I have not seen. Is this a? Uh, is this Yu-Gi-Oh! GX? This Schwarzenegger elephant. How much Yu-Gi-Oh have you watched, Darian? Just curious, because I know Sauce is like obsessive with it. She watches every single series. Okay, here we go. This is the time. This is the run. Probably shouldn't say that. I'm gonna jinx it. Here we go. Ah, I got stuck for like a split second. It's done. Now to get all the toys for Bob Relics. Hope you'll stay with me for the next 48 hours. That's a joke. It would take even longer than that.
I'd be dead. I'd starve before I got all the toys for Bob Relics. I don't know if I'm physically capable of getting them all. You really did it! 100%, 106% completion. You've unlocked a second bonus ending. Visit the gallery to view. I like how Crash is giving me the, the, the fingers like, hey! All right. You, yeah, you tired, Crash? I'm pretty tired, too. Well, here's the gallery. Environments, characters, galleries all complete. I don't know why they still have exclamation part marks, because I've looked at all of these. Let's let's view the endings in order. Let, let, we, we've seen this one before, but... Uh, let's look at the regular ending one more time. Must have taken a hit to the old temporal lobe. For the fallen foe can only mean one thing. It came to blows, and I won! My new general's first order of business will be to dispose of you. <laughs> we are closer than ever before. Quickly, into the vortex! Dr. Vortex, the vortex... Okay, yeah, it's embryo. You stay. What are you going to do to me? So Uka Uka was just in the he's just in the past forever now. He never escaped. Somewhere he can't cause any trouble. Enjoy the end of the universe. Entropy and Cortex came back and he just stayed there. Is he in a time loop? Is that how he he was like trapped when he when he was freed in Crash 3? No. That was that was a very PS2 crash. <laughs> They're using footage from End Saint Trilogy. Was that the exact cutscene? I, I guess it makes sense given the given the theme of the past and all. What if? Oh, it would have been great if they had like PS1 style models for past Cortex and all the past characters. I guess that would have been a little too on the nose. Three, two, one. Also, all the elementals just live here now? Not the elementals, the, uh, the, the, the space-time masks. Rip Mel Winkler. Are they gonna go home? Do they have a place to go? Are they gonna be in Crash 5? I have so many questions. Maybe we can get those questions answered. Let, let's see the ending that we got when we got all of the uh, the gems and insane relics. I don't think I've ever watched this, so this is new to me. Engine abandoned his it heavy metal lifestyle for one of smooth jazz. Oh. His album oh, this is like the... Doomsday device is currently number one in elevators all over the world. He'll be playing in the hotel bar from 3 to 3.30. This is like the Where Are They Now in uh, Crash 1's optional ending. He is on display in the Art of Taxidermy at Ripper Room's Curious Cabinet of Curiosities. To fuel his need for speed, Oxide became hooked on caffeine. He was hired as the spokesperson for a leading brand of energy. Did we watch this? He is currently Maybe we did. And in the this sounds familiar. Without their master, Cortex's lab assistants found themselves in need of a new And Cortex team. became a professional- I'm uh, sorry, Coco became a professional a streamer, right? That's where this goes. Specializing in crystals. Dingo Dial franchised his restaurant operation, with Dingo's Diner rising to become the first name in chain fast casual dining. 
They closed overnight with official citing record health code violations. The original location remains open during its condemnation. After successful expeditions to El Dorado, Shangri-La, Atlantis, and a brief fling with some dweeb named Smith and Drake, Tana is taking a brief hiatus from her adventures to recenter. She's recently taken up scrapbooking. She's not very good yet, but she's getting there. After trying and failing to And there she the is, there's Nina. Flying, flying car, Coco found a new career as an esports champion. Don't forget to follow kick ass Coco and smash that adore button. The dimensions have heard nothing more. The doctor's trophy since Crash foiled their plans. But evil geniuses are harder to squash than cockroaches. And as for me, <laughs> well, let's just say I'm doing just fine. That that made me irrationally uncomfortable. All right. Final ending. 106%. That's it? That we, we did 106% for that. Wow, that's the second most disappointing 100% completion ending I've ever seen. Only after Jack won. That wasn't worth it at all. Well, now I've done it so that you don't have to. Darian, you can stop playing Crash 4. It's not worth it. Go home. Well, I did do it. There it is. 100%. Everything in the game. And with that... Four hours, 12 minutes. Well, minus the endings, yeah, I was pretty much right on the money for four hours. So, uh, we made time. It's finally over. No more Crash 4. I just, no more Crash. Until they make a new game. I could do, like, the, the, the first game. Like, uh, I considered doing that in, like, a speed run. That wouldn't take too long. We'll see. We'll see if there's any more Crash in the future, but for now... That's it for today. We'll probably do something with Jack this weekend and see if I can get maybe the Mario beta for uh, next Wednesday. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.